Hello, this is Basil Numerzitsky with the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook from April through July, this coming fire season. A look at some of the components that go into producing our outlooks. We look at the uh, temperatures for last month, and you can see the significantly cooler than normal readings. A lot of areas 10 to 20 degrees cooler than normal. That's unheard of uh, for uh, that long of a time period, for 30 plus days. And we look at precipitation on the right. It has been a very wet month. A lot of areas getting anywhere from 150 to um, near 400 percent of their normal precipitation. A few drier islands. Sometimes that's overdone by just one faulty station. But I think overall, uh, even in our uh, drier areas, it still has been somewhat above normal. Um, looking back a bit further for the entire wet season, going back to October 1st through the winter months, you can see the above normal precipitation just amazingly so, 150 to as much as 300% above normal across much of the southern half of the geographic area, actually getting up into parts of uh, eastern Idaho, uh, some drier areas in the Snake River Plain, uh, but the real dryness is further up northwards into the Pacific Northwest, a uh, bit of a dry pocket down in southern Nevada and some of the desert areas. Uh, looking at different time periods at our monsoon, last summer we had a very strong monsoonal push above average here in uh, Utah and exceptionally above average. Uh, the main axis of the monsoon actually shifted westwards and northwards up into uh, much of Nevada and towards the Sierra. Uh, it was drier further north. Uh, Looking at the percent of average precipitation, and we combine the monsoon through the winter months, and again, really, it's the I-80 corridor on southwards, where anywhere from 130 to 180 or 200 percent of normal in a lot of these areas, and drier as you head further north. And this has played a role in how much fine fuel is available, as well as carryover from previous seasons. Some areas are affected more. Uh, with growth from the monsoon, some more so from the winter months. Uh, and a kind of an interesting pattern shaping up here in the uh, Snake River Plain, especially the western parts into western Idaho. Uh, and we didn't show it that much, but they had a very wet spring last year into early summer before the monsoon. And uh, basically, a lot of that growth did not get a chance to catch on fire as much last year. So a lot of carryover fuel there. This is going to be a big concern once we get into the drier part of the summer season, all other park pockets across parts of Nevada as well. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, the big story, snowpack, near record or beyond record snowpack in the blue areas, 150 to as much as 300% uh, of normal snowpack. Even um, in our northern areas, they've come up quite a bit. They are anywhere from 110 to 145% of normal uh, across the Great Basin. And we uh, look at some areas through here, uh, western Nevada, Mount Rose. Uh, this is 40 years worth of data, and you can see that they are just below their record level snow water equivalent for uh, this time of year. So uh, normal is this green line through here, record low is here. So you can see how much above normal their snow water equivalent is. And we'll do a quick look around the Great Basin in the higher terrain. In northeast Nevada, Lamoille Station Number 3, they are at record levels for this date and continue to grow. Again, well up above that green normal line. Same story for far southern Nevada, up in the mountains just outside of Vegas. And you can see that they are just blowing away the record snowpack. So the higher terrain areas there going to be a late, late, late start if things even start at all. Uh, northern Utah, um, Brighton Ski Area. Highest snow water equivalent in their long history and continues to grow with several more feet of snow coming up in uh, the uh, end of March and early April. And in, in central Idaho, not as much, but still uh, probably somewhere in the 85% uh, percentile, definitely still well above their normal snow water equivalent. They are about 50% above that. And in uh, Western Wyoming, that is the area that is lowest in terms of snow water equivalent, but still, you can see the black line above the average green, still significantly uh, above normal even for there. So our higher terrain in all areas 
of the Great Basin looking really good. Down in southwest Utah as well, did not want to forget that area. Again, totally blowing away record. This is uh, kind of just north of St. George up in the mountains there, not too far from the Nevada border. So again, higher terrain areas in the south. Hard to know if they will melt off that snow before the monsoon arrives. Uh, looking at 10-hour fuel moistures currently, you can see just extremely moist. We'll just flash through these real quick. 100-hour fuels, 1,000-hour fuels, very moist. Uh, soil moisture itself, also very high, and this could lead to more grass growth very shortly as the days are getting longer and the lower elevations are getting snow-free. Um, now the drought, uh, significant improvement here compared to a year ago. And you can see the prognosis here is that drought removal is likely across a lot of areas. Drought could persist or intensify, actually, in the northern portions of the Great Basin towards Idaho. We'll have to monitor that. Uh, interesting relationship between uh, drought and above-normal fire seasons. Areas in the black are, in, are some of our above-normal burn, burning air times or burning years. And you can see that areas in the middle of the drought, not that much, and that's the... Main thing that uh, basically you need some fine fuel growth. If you're too dry, you just don't have that fine fuel bed or carryover fuel. So you need to get into those wet seasons. So that's a little interesting. Uh, Utah, uh, similar story. Now, just comparing uh, March right now, late March on the left, to where we were a year ago. And you'd see a lot of areas have improved by two or three levels on the drought monitor. So definitely good news for this fire season. Uh, this could pose problems in those same southern areas and central areas of the Great Basin. Maybe in the next 12 to 18 months, we get more fine fuel growth or we start getting, uh, you know, kind of more into uh, availability of grasses and brush. So we'll have to watch that. Um, Idaho, their relationship, they're typically not so much into the super drought years. It's usually... Uh, coming out of them. And that's mainly for the Snake River Plain, a lot of times in some of the BLM land. But let's put it all together. We've looked at the past, the fuels, the snowpack, drought conditions. What happens from here is determined by what the weather is going to do. When we look at some signals, whether it's La Nina or El Nino, and the computer uh, prognosis chart shows that we, we've emerged out of La Nina and are quickly heading towards neutral conditions where we currently are. And by late summer, we should be into uh, a week to even moderate El Nino as we go through the end of the year. And tricky to say how that prognosis goes. Sometimes uh, that can wreak havoc with the um, hurricane season a little bit. Uh, it could also affect the monsoon. There are preliminary indications that the monsoon, which has been very robust for the Great Basin the past two years, could be delayed this year. So that will be interesting to watch in some of those areas that do have abundant fine fuels. So just uh, to point out why we talk about the El Nino or La Nina, in the La Nina, the storm track usually comes out of the north. Cold storms come into the Pacific Northwest and drop down into the northern Rockies, usually towards the I-80 corridor and northwards, and it's usually drier to the south. Um, El Nino conditions tend to be more west to east storm tracks across the Pacific, bringing wetness to the southern part of the geographic area and drier conditions further north. And ironically, this is this has been the storm track for much of this winter, despite the fact that we started in a La Nina, but we're transitioning. So a lot of factors go into it. But we've basically had a, uh, an El Nino type storm track this year with the wetness across the southern half of the geographic area. So Let's go to the uh, monthly outlook for April. That cooler than normal pattern is expected to continue. The storminess, though, should start to taper off as we get, especially into the middle latter parts of, of April. So we could start finally seeing some, some warming. Now the three-month outlook, May, June, and July, above normal temperatures for a large portion of the geographic area. Uh, near normal chances here. You can see the below normal. Uh, starting to get towards a monsoon season could be a bit delayed. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. Really low confidence as we go into the uh, precipitation outlook for the latter part of uh, this outlook period. Uh, our predictive services uh, climate expert also makes uh, his prognosis, Rich Naden, and again has similar cooler than normal features through here. And we start shifting to significantly warmer than normal conditions as we go into June and July. And it's, of course, normal to get warmer, but 
looking at even warmer than normal conditions. But the interesting part is wetness still lingers here in May and maybe in the northern areas into June. So it might not be until July where the monsoon could be late this year that we could see activity starting to pick up. I think below before that, we're looking really good. And let's take a look at it, put all the pieces together. April, no issues. We normally are dormant this time of year. In May, we, are, we have put a fairly large area of below normal. A lot of that's due to the snowpack and the soil moisture and just the grasses should be green. And we're not looking at any return to above normal temperatures that quickly. Um, in June, that above no, that below normal shifts further northwards, uh, still keeping it in those higher terrain areas outside of Vegas. You saw some of their record snow water equivalents through there. Same thing with the Sierra. It's going to be a late, late start in those higher elevations across uh, the mountains of southern and western Nevada, as well as the whole Wasatch chain. I wouldn't be surprised if this bleeds into a good portion of uh, eastern Idaho as well, where their snowpacks are quite healthy. Now, July is when things get a little interesting. Most areas normal, still keeping below normal in the Sierra with that deep snowpack. But with that above normal carryover fuels that we have in parts of the Snake River Plain, we do have a pretty good potential for above normal uh, large fire potential in this area. We'll keep an eye on that still quite a few months away. A look at the map nationally, April. You can see there's action already expected across parts of the southwest. Uh, New Mexico, Texas, Southern Arizona, as well as Florida and Eastern areas. Uh, May, you can see where our areas of green combine with Northern Arizona. Uh, June, things kind of stay quiet through here. Not much red at all on the map, so it could be a very slow start to fire season. But then things start picking up in the Pacific Northwest into parts of Western Idaho as we get into July. And this concludes our seasonal outlook. Have a great day, everyone.